job from me. <laughs> me with my way. All right, today we are making the main delicacy of whoopie pies, okay? Also known as devil dogs. These are as quintessential New England as you can get. My mame, that's French Canadian for grandma, sent me this recipe. I had them all the time growing up as a kid. She is from the smallest town in Maine. It's called Lil Maine, L-I-L. It's right at the tip on the border to Canada. And she used to make these for me all the time as a kid and she finally sent me the recipe. Super secret recipe, so no peeking. No peeking, just kidding. I guess you'll see it right now. But this is as New England as you can get. So all you're gonna need, flour, shortening, sugar, vanilla, baking soda, salt, chocolate. That's what's gonna make the patties. Next portion is gonna be the filling, but we won't get to that yet. So to start, set the oven to 350, start. That was step one, preheat the oven. Step two, you're gonna sift together your dry ingredients. We don't have a sift, so we use a whisk. It works the same. So how much is this? Is this step two? This is step two, sure. This is two cups of flour. Well, this is one cup of flour. One. So that's all the flour we need. Now we need one and one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. So we come over here, you measure over the sink. Okay, one teaspoon. Here's the other pour part. This is half a teaspoon. I lost my quarter teaspoon, so we have to eyeball it. Fill that up about halfway, put it in there. And then also a fourth teaspoon of salt, same thing. It's a little bit too much. Okay, salt. And then we need five tablespoons of cacao powder. We have one, we have two, three, four, five. And then sift, or just kind of mix it up. Okay, that's pretty decently sifted. So that's all the dry ingredients. We're gonna move it over near the blender, or the mixer, not the blender. And then we're going to mix wet ingredients. This is step number three. We need six tablespoons of shortening. Now you need one cup of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. Okay. One egg. And you want to beat the egg before you put it in the mixture. Next, you need one cup of milk. I already measured it, but let's just be doubly sure. Okay, one cup of milk. And lastly, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now you wanna bring it over to the mixer. You're gonna mix it on the lowest setting. Okay, so step number four. You're gonna start adding in your flour mixture, just a little bit at a time though, so it doesn't blow up in your face. Go ahead and stop it, and add some more. Just make sure you scrape the sides of the bowl 
in order to make sure all of the flour mixture gets incorporated. And I'm just gonna add the last bit of flour. Just gonna go ahead and scrape the sides one more time. And that's how you make sure it's tasting, all right? So once your batter looks something like this, you're gonna go ahead and stop mixing it because you don't wanna over mix the batter. It's gonna give you a really runny cookie. And you need a cookie sheet, cling film, and Crisco. Rip off a little piece, dip it in, and then grease the pan to make sure the cookies don't stick to it. You could also use butter or cooking spray, but this is gonna work the best and not give you any extra flavor. Come back to your stand mixer, unplug it because safety first. Take this off and you use your fingers to get all of this stuff off so you're not wasting any batter. For this little bit is you're going to take a tablespoon measure and go ahead and plop them onto your greased pan. The reason I recommend taking a tablespoon is because we're gonna sandwich them together with a filling in the middle. And so you kind of want them all to be relatively the same size or else you're just gonna have some crazy uneven sandwiches. So the recipe says bake on 350 for 10 minutes. We're gonna start with eight minutes because I've never made them before and I don't know how they'll take to my oven. And then I'm just gonna keep going and putting the rest of the batter on here while those ones cook. Oh yeah. This is the stuff? Oh yeah. Once you and your boyfriend have sufficiently licked the bowl clean, you're gonna wanna soak it so you can clean it easier. <laughs> oh no! <gasps> okay, they spread out way more than I thought they were going to. <laughs> we might just have to have some square whoopie pies. Okay, so we already have one batch out of the oven. They look like this. I did read the recipe wrong. It said teaspoons, whatever. We're gonna have big whoopie pies. The second batch is done. Again, some pretty big whoopie pies, but they're still gonna taste good. So the last step before you just let them cool completely is you're gonna have to remove them from the tray. So you just go ahead, take a spatula, they should come off very easily and put them on a wire rack lined with paper towel. There's a little wire rack underneath there. I don't have a big enough one, so. So you just are gonna have to let these ones cool down a little bit more until you can transfer them because if you transfer them too soon, the bottoms are gonna get stuck to the pan. So while you wait for those to cool, you should do your dishes. I already did most of mine because you're gonna need the mixer bowl again along with the mixer attachment in order to make the filling. So while you wait for those to cool, you should just get your other stuff out you're going to need the shortening again, the most New England ingredient of all time, fluffernutter, vanilla, and confectioner sugar. So just leave that out so that way you're ready to go once your cookies are as cool as they need to be. It probably takes about 45 minutes for them to cool down because you don't want them warm at all or else the icing is just gonna melt right off. So I'm gonna wait about five minutes, transfer these to the rack, and then in another 45 minutes, they should be ready to ice. So we've got our cookies covered. This is what they look like. Beautiful, beautiful. And now we are going to go ahead and make the filling. So we laid out the ingredients already. And the first thing you have to add is 3 fourths cup of confectioner sugar. This measuring doesn't have to be as precise since it's just icing, but you do wanna make sure you get the right consistency. Next, you wanna add 3 fourths cup of the shortening.
Next, you're gonna need uh, six tablespoons of the marshmallow fluff. And the last ingredient is gonna be one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Now you're gonna go ahead and put it in the stand mixer and you're just going to blend it until creamy. Okay, so while that was mixing in the stand mixer, I went ahead and matched up my little cookie things so that way I would make sure they were around the same size. So we have enough to make 12. So this part is self-explanatory. All you're gonna do is pick up the frosting and put it in the whoopie pie. And that's it. And you have your New England whoopie pie devil dog scrumptious.